Some of you might be familiar with Aesop's fables. Aesop was allegedly a slave and storyteller in ancient Greece, and there are many, many stories attributed to this figure, but the one in particular that I want to talk about in reference to the topic I'm going to be discussing today is the tale of the tortoise and the hare. And in a nutshell, the tortoise and the hare is a story about a rather arrogant hare that is challenged to a race by the tortoise after the hare points its finger at it and says, look, you're a slowpoke, you can't do anything. And the hare, in all his confidence and his speed, speeds past the tortoise, then promptly takes a nap, and then by the time he wakes up, realizes that the tortoise is about to cross the finish line, and because he was inconsistent and not persistent enough, the tortoise beats him. And of course, the moral of this story, we're told, is that the race is not to the swift, but rather perhaps to the persistent. But in our modern story of the tortoise and the hare, we have two nations, two countries, the United States and China. And China is very much the hare, but the hare that is not slowing down. The hare that continues to go without any impediment and continues to do so whilst in the United States, the tortoise, the formerly persistent tortoise, is also going, all the while beset by many, many entanglements that the Chinese simply don't have. Now, back in 2015, I'll post a link to the article, the Chinese managed to produce the first gene-edited baby. This, of course, awoke the choirs of horror in the West, who condemned this as hideously unethical and immoral, and take your pick of all the aspersions one might cast, but nonetheless, they did it. And the Chinese interest in genetic modification and research is all in all uh, pretty profound and pretty prolific, especially compared to the West, at least in some regards, in the sense that they're willing to do things the West simply are not. Now, recently in the United States, there were bans put on certain types of gene editing, and I want you to think about the consequences of this because there are no such bans in China. Now, generally speaking, there are two types of gene therapy. There's somatic gene therapy and there's germline gene therapy. Somatic gene therapy simply entails a section of DNA being transferred to any cell of the body that doesn't produce sperm or eggs, and that type of gene therapy has no implications for children or offspring. But germline gene therapy does, because you're transferring a part of the DNA to cells that do produce eggs or sperm, and that can be passed down as anything else might be in a heritable sense. But the United States is pretty prudish about both things, actually, and the Chinese have no such inhibitions. And I don't want to spend too much time on the science itself. That's not really the matter at hand, although it is completely relevant here. It's something I've talked about in the past. The reason why American politicians are rejecting this type of research has a lot to do with posturing and posturing related specifically to false pretenses of morality or ethical conduct and of course catering and placating a voter base. It seems to me obvious that religious people would probably be against this type of editing because it changes the material that God set you up with or something along those lines. And in general, there's a lot of caution, which you might say is warranted when it comes to new forms of technology, especially gene technology. But again, observe that the Chinese have no such inhibitions. Now, I made a video a while back talking about the purpose behind principles. Principles have a context. They don't exist in a vacuum. And when principles cease to function, when they lose application, which admittedly, sometimes difficult to discern when that happens, they're not particularly useful anymore. Now, the other issue here is that despite all this condemnation directed towards the Chinese, they're just continuing along their merry way. And the issue, the real issue to highlight here, and I've talked about this before, is that there is a general failure in so-called social democracy to address things and to get things done in a way that more autocratic countries like China can do. The Chinese government doesn't require the approval of a voter base. It doesn't require the approval 
of a public, not really at least, not in the same sense the United States says, sure, you could have mass riots, I guess, but generally speaking, as the Chinese economy grows and people are content with their status and wealth, well, I don't think we're going to see any mass rebellions or uprisings anytime soon. And so it can just keep on doing what it wants to do. And this is something that in the mainstream, no one really is willing to entertain as a thought or even a thought experiment. There's one guy I should mention, Jeffrey Miller, who's an evolutionary psychologist who has kept his eye on China, the hair in this case, the hair that never stops. And he's observed, and this would be my observation too, that it might not be the case that democracy and justice, whatever that means, that these things win out in the end. Because again, in a highly competitive world with all sorts of new technologies and gene technology probably being the most salient of any of them because we're talking about fundamentally changing the human genome and producing all kinds of potential effects, whether for good or for ill, if you have constraints on that, that might be a great thing. Maybe people will laud you for it. But again, if you're an autocratic country like the Chinese, it doesn't really much matter. Of course, they're going to make mistakes, economic mistakes and scientific mistakes. But the point I'm trying to make here is that an autocracy of the sort of China can keep on making these mistakes and eventually they'll stop making mistakes. They can keep on doing these things. Meanwhile, in the West, you can get an endless continuation of squabbles and disagreement and filibustering whereby nothing is achieved, nothing gets done. And in some sense, that's often desirable because you don't want necessarily the pendulum to tip too far to one side or the other. But for these really, really salient, important matters, things like gene therapy and gene editing technology, I think that social democracy is going to be a huge failure. A couple of reasons here that I've alluded to, but let me go into greater detail. If you require the approval of a voter base and your voter base is opposed to the idea and they know nothing about the technology but it simply offends their religious sensibilities, well, that doesn't really matter much because your primary directive as a politician is to get reelected. So who cares about the technology itself? You're just going to say whatever you need to to placate those voters. If you need to get something done that is more or less approved by the public, you might still encounter opposition in the form of oppositional parties who don't agree with what you're trying to get done. And then it needs to go through Congress, and then it needs to be discussed, and then maybe this won't get done, and maybe it will get done. And it's an endless barrage of bureaucracy. And I think what we're beginning to see quickly rather than slowly is that social democracy, this notion that this is the ultimate form, the zenith of everything, the apogee of political governance, that it might not work out in the end, not quite as people want it to. Now, you can say what you want about the Chinese, but they do not give a damn. They don't care. They're going to keep on doing what they want to do. And it doesn't matter if the entire world from east to west condemns them and says how unethical they are and they shouldn't be doing this with their designer babies or intelligence research, trying to find genes that either correlate with or perhaps even cause intelligence, they don't care. They realize, the Chinese, the significance of this type of thing, and they will press forward. They are the energizer bunny. They're the hare. They're going to keep on going. And the tortoise, on the other hand, is going to be left behind. You see, it's not just a case of the race not being to the swift. Sometimes speed is important. And sometimes persistence is important, too. And you combine the two, and you'll beat both. That's the tricky part of that story, right? The idea is if you're lazy and don't do something, that is, you don't even run the race, okay, maybe you won't win. If you're faster to begin with, and you do run the entire race, and you don't take a break, you're probably going to beat the tortoise regardless. And that's what we see happening here. Now, I'm not saying Chinese governance or autocracy is this wonderful thing and everyone is happy about it. I'm not saying that at all, in fact. There are definitely downsides to it. The downsides in terms of technological advancement and various outcomes pertaining to scientific research, they're not really there because they have carte blanche to do whatever the hell they want. Many, if not most, private research institutions in China are co-funded privately and by the government. 
And so what we have here is the perfect storm. And meanwhile, in the States, where people are going to squabble over this stuff, and in Europe, where similar regulations and concerns might be brought up, I think this is indicative of slowly but surely cracks beginning to appear in the system. Contrary to what people claim, people like Francis Fukuyama, social democracy is not the end goal of anything. Systems of government change. Principles change. And I think it's very important to point out the fact that if the West wants to stay on board with being an advanced society, they're going to have to make certain concessions. Now, I'm not saying that the United States or parts of Europe need to become autocracies similar to China, but they're going to have to rethink certain things. Because if they don't rethink some of these things, there will certainly be issues in the future. Because even if the Chinese make mistakes constantly, eventually they will stop making mistakes. And when the United States and the West more broadly don't even attempt to do these things, well, of course, in that case, there won't be any mistakes to be made. The same token, there won't be any progress to be made either. You'll just have stagnation. And I think that's what really I'm trying to illustrate here. You can't simply assume that there's an ultimate form of the body politic and just assume that's going to work for all eternity. We need to be flexible and think about things and think about what quote-unquote competitors are doing, like China. I'm not so sure the U.S. or the West is going to get the job done on really critical issues like this one. And it remains to be seen if there's any change in the wind, but I'm not sensing it. Anyway, thanks for tuning in, and if I'm still alive and hail, I will check you out later. As always, may the gods watch over you, and bye-bye. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. And if you enjoy my content, please consider making a donation or becoming a patron. Thanks for watching.